Section 10.13 is called voltage regulation. And uh, notice that when we go through this, and 10.13 uh, is basically just working uh, a problem, but uh, notice it's defined in terms of the secondary voltage, because what we're thinking here is that uh, the, the primary voltage is held constant. And so what, when we're talking about uh, voltage regulation, we're looking at the difference between the no load secondary voltage and the loaded secondary voltage. So um, how well does this machine, once current starts to flow, does it maintain uh, the uh, voltage that you see at no load? And uh, we'll present a, an equation to you. We'll work through a problem and we'll understand why this is important as we uh, walk through it. So here's our basic equation for voltage regulation. The voltage at no load minus the voltage at full load in the uh, numerator divided by the full load voltage times 100 gives us the uh, percentage of voltage regulation. He goes on to tell us in the description um, that uh, voltage regulation depends upon the power factor of the load. What type of load do you have? Is it, uh, you know, capacitive, inductive, resistant? What, you know, or, you know, as we all know that usually it's a, it's a combination of all those. And so the power factor needs to be specified when, we, when you work a problem like that. And then the other thing that he tells us is that if the uh, load is capacitive, the no load voltage may be uh, higher than the full load voltage. And in that case, the voltage uh, regulation would actually be negative because we think about, you know, capacitors returning, you know, energy to the circuit and so forth, reactive um, power back. But anyway, so let's work through a problem and um, see uh, this is, um, let's say 10.5 doesn't really have a figure. So I'm just gonna have to write down some things. It says, I have a single phase um, um, transformer that is rated at 3000 uh, KVA uh, with a 69.4 uh, kilovolt primary and a 4,000.16 KV uh, secondary. It's uh, 60 Hertz uh, and the total impedance, it has a total impedance Z sub P that's equal to um, 127 ohms, referred to the primary side, you know, going back to that model that we developed earlier in, uh, in one of our um, um, modules that we went through. So first off, he says, what is the primary and secondary currents? Okay, so the rated primary current, the rated primary current is going to be, again, you know, we're looking at this, right? Right, so when we're talking about current, we're basically solving for um, the current on the in, in relation to the primary side. This is um, three million or three hundred thousand. I mean three thousand thousand. Um, anyway, that's the easy part. I should be able to write that down. Okay, and then uh, divided by the uh, primary side voltage, which is sixty nine thousand. And what I get for that is the current rated primary current of 43.5 amps. Okay, rated secondary current is going to be again um, I in S, and that's going to begin be 3 million divided by the voltage on the secondary side, or 4.16 K. And that should come out to be our 721 amps on the secondary side. Okay, so that's A um, and the two parts of that. Okay, so after we have that information, he says in part B, the voltage regulation from no load to full load for a 2000 kilowatt resistive load, knowing that the primary supply voltage is fixed at 69 kV. Okay, so um, we're, we're told that and we know that that's the case. So um, let's look and see if we can figure that out and somehow maybe uh, what's, what's a method? Is there anything, how do we go about solving a problem like that? Okay, so in part B, we've got a 2000 kilowatt, it's dissipating 2000 kilowatts of, of, of 
electricity and it is uh, purely resistive. It's a purely resistive uh, load that we're dealing with. Okay, so the power factor is one, right? All right, okay. All right, and we know that the primary supply voltage is fixed at 69,000. Well, we, we have, uh, we actually have a, um, a slide that we can look at that's based off of our um, uh, simplified model. You know, here's our 69,000, here's our um, total impedance here, and then we can determine what the uh, turns ratio is, the A value, you know, if you actually wanted to, you know, put that in there as the, the actual values, you know, he's, he's uh, bypassing some of that, but you know, this is, uh, this is uh, 69,000 divided by 4160, and that's where he comes up with this 16.58 as our turns ratio, okay? So, uh, you know, in our model, you know, we can work with that to come up with um, what we need to know. So, you know, the total uh, uh, impedance is uh, G sub P is equal to 127 ohms. So if we refer to this figure, we can determine what we need to know in terms of the approximate impedance of the, uh, of the 2000 kilowatt load, okay? So we don't know the impedance, we just know how much power is dissipated that. So it's another power equation. It's a power is V squared R, right? And so that's what we're working at. So Z, and actually, uh, you know, and when I do this, you know, I'm just taking us back to Ohm's law. We know this is an impedance, right? So this is, um, and that's not a U, that is a V. And so, you know, it's, it's just an application of power laws. We're solving for the impedance. And so um, that's simply going to be, um, you know, uh, 4160 squared divided by the um, power, which is uh, two, I forgot, 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 forgot. It is 2000 kilowatts, 2000K or two meg. And uh, that comes out to be 8.65 ohms okay so the load impedance is referred to the primary side by multiplying by multi multiplying you know this value um, through the process that we went through earlier right this this a squared a squared we already know what it is it's 16.58 squared you know, it's that squared, and then times uh, 8.65 ohms. And for that, we get uh, a load impedance referred to the primary side as 2380, okay? So that's how that would work. Now, that's, uh, you know, reference to the first part of that. Now, keep all this in mind and I'll, I'll sort of, well, let me slot, well, it is the next slide. So, so here are all those values, right? So, you know, this is, this is the beauty of going through all that uh, work to get this equivalent. And, you know, so here's, here's what we end up with, right? So this, this impedance referred to the uh, primary side, you know, using the A squared term, there's that, there's the um, X of P that we were, uh, excuse me, the, the Z sub P that is X of P that is the, um, 127 ohms. And so now, now what we can do, referring to this uh, 1026B, we can finish this, this uh, problem up. Okay, so what we're looking for, what we'd like to know is what is the primary current? Okay, so primary current is going to be the voltage 69,000, I'll turn that into a comma. That didn't work real well, I'll fix that. And 69,000 divided by the total impedance of the circuit, okay? So, you know, what, what do we have here? What, what is that? Well, we're told that we have 127 squared plus 2,380 squared, you know? going through the process, 
I end up with 28.95 amps, okay, is the primary current for this problem, okay, 28.95 amps. Now, let's finish this problem. And again, we couldn't do this without our uh, model that we developed. There's just, you know, we don't have the, the way to do that without our, our model. Okay, so this, this next part, stay with me. I, I don't know that, um, you know, it's going to be absolutely obvious, but look with me on page 211, okay? So, so we've got, you know, what we want to, what we need next is, you know, the, uh, the load current, which we, derived right we, i mean we, we've got the primary current first okay so um if we look at and and stick with me here guys um if i look at this equation okay turns ratio voltage over primary divided by voltage over secondary you know the same as you know this relationship here and and so that defines a right all right so if that's the case I'm going to solve this for secondary voltage, which I'm able to do with uh, this portion of this, okay? And so first off, um, whatever that uh, number comes out to be, you know, 2380 here times the current, right? So this is our, our um, voltage on the secondary, we end up with a 68.9, 68,902. And then the secondary voltage, you know, is derived from this. Primary is held constant at that, divided by A, which we found A to be, back here, this, right? right that's A, 69,000 divided by 4160. You know, invert, multiply, and so I end up with the 4154 uh, voltage uh, at that point. Okay, so he says because the primary voltage is held constant at 69,000, it follows that the secondary voltage at no load would be 4160. Okay, and that that's just given to us at the beginning of this thing. Okay. That was given to us at the beginning in the conditions that were laid down in the nameplate information, you know, on this, all right? So we flip over to the uh, second page, and we end up with our um, no load voltage, which is 4160. I'm just going to borrow that again. And the full load voltage, which we calculated at 4154, right? 4154, yeah, 4154, that we went through all that, you know, grunting that out there to, to get to that point where we had the load coupled to it. And then we divide that by the full load. And when we do that, we end up with a number of 0.14%. That is an excellent voltage regulation, you know? Excellent, less than a percent loss here in the voltage regulation. And then one other quick thing here, one other quick thing, and, we're, and hang in here, we're almost done with this chapter, by the way. The, the, prim, the last thing he says, what are the primary and secondary currents if the secondary is accidentally short-circuited, okay? So if we actually end up uh, shorting out, you know, the secondary, you know, we bypass the load is, is what we're saying, and we, and we do a dead short across there. Okay, so if you look again at uh, 1026B, 1026B, and I guess I better clean this up if we're gonna do any looking at this, right? I gotta clean this up. Okay, come on. All right, there we go. So um, what we're looking at here is, um, primary current with a shorted secondary, okay? So first off, the A times E sub S is equal to zero because of the short, okay? 
So primary in this case is going to be the 69,000. This is gone. Bye bye. All we're left is with that is the only um, impedance to current. So that's 127 ohms. So that's 69,000 volts. And we end up with 543 amps of current. Okay. And again, this is in reference to the secondary. So when I move that to, I mean, this is, oh, I didn't want to say that. This is in reference to the primary, right? That's where that equation comes from. So if I want to know what the current is on the secondary side, right? It's A times I sub P. And we know that, you know, from our definition of A, which is IS over IP, right? All this kind of coming back to us. And if I do that, the uh, A is uh, defined as the 69,000. Now I'm just, I'm writing the actual numbers. He doesn't do that. 4160, we know the 16, what is it? The 16.58 uh, multiplied by the primary. And that comes out to be 9,006 amps. Wowzer, that's a lot, a lot of current, right? So he goes on to say the short circuit currents in both the primary and secondary windings are 12 and a half times greater than the rated values. The I squared R losses are therefore 12 and a half squared or 156 times the uh, normal. The circuit breaker or fuse protecting this transformer must open immediately to prevent overheating very powerful electromagnetic forces are set up. They too are 156 times greater than normal. And, you know, uh, unless the windings are fairly braced and supported, they may be damaged or torn apart. Okay, well, I hope this worked out here. And if it did, I'm gonna stop and we're gonna move on. <laughs>